In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the Alex problem called identifying, oxidizing, and reducing agents. This problem is actually pretty tricky. There's a lot of different things that need to be done, plus you have to do it three times, three different reactions here. So for every one of these chemical equations that's given to you, first of all, you have to decide whether or not it is a redox reaction. And if it is a redox reaction, you have to identify the reducing agent and the oxidizing agent. Let's just start with this part first. In order to uh, determine if this is a redox reaction, we have to use or calculate the oxidation numbers. If we have any change to any oxidation numbers, then that means that it is a, a redox reaction. So any oxidation numbers that are changing, uh, we're gonna answer yes to this. So that's gonna be our first goal when we look at this. Let's just go through and classify our oxidation numbers. We've got a couple of elements that are here just in their atomic state. Those always have an oxidation number of zero. We've got our chloride ions. Anytime we see those like really traditional group seven ions, we know that that's, um, oxidation number will be the charge of that ion. And then for these chloride ions in, in the left-hand side, we have two of them, which means we have a total of minus two. And because we have a total of minus two for those chloride ions, that tells us that this nickel must have an oxidation number of plus two. Um, for our right-hand side, FeCl3, there we've got three chloride ions, um, which gives us a total minus three oxidation number. And that means that this iron needs to have an oxidation number of plus three. So when we're looking and comparing, uh, looking for changes in oxidation number, we want to basically follow an atom through the reaction. So we wanna look at iron on the left-hand side and also iron over on the right-hand side and take a look at its oxidation numbers. You can see that its oxidation number has changed. So right now we can answer, yes, this is a redox reaction because we see that change right there. Whenever we find one atom that's having an oxidation number being changed, we're always gonna be able to find a second as well. So let's go figure out what that second atom is. Uh, it looks like our nickel is starting with an oxidation number of plus two and it's ending with an oxidation number of zero. So there's our other change. And if you look at chlorine, it's starting with an oxidation number of minus one, ending with a minus one, no change there. Um, so we can actually ignore that chlorine. I'm just gonna erase this data for chlorine because we don't need to pay attention to it. It's not changing. So once we've identified the two components of the oxidation uh, reduction reaction, the two things that are actually changing, let's classify that process based on our definitions um, of oxidation and reduction. If we're just going with the oxidation numbers, if the oxidation number is reduced, that means that we are looking at a reduction reaction. It makes it nice and easy to remember. So if we see zero going up to negative or up to positive three, that's not a reduction in number, that's an increase. But we see two going down to zero. So that means that this process is reduction. And the way that we would kind of verbalize that is that the NiCl2 is undergoing reduction or being reduced. The opposite, if our oxidation number is increasing, that's going to be an oxidation process. Now this is not what the problem is asking. It's asking us to identify the reducing agent. The reducing agent is the thing that causes the reduction. The reducing agent is the thing that's undergoing oxidation. So the oxidation is the thing that causes the reduction and the reduction is the thing that causes oxidation, all of this notation is really frustrating for a lot of students. The thing that's undergoing oxidation and causing reduction is the reducing agent. So for us, this is going to be Fe. Alex doesn't need you to write states or anything. You can just write Fe. The thing that is being reduced, the thing that is causing oxidation is the NiCl2. CL, N-I-C-L-2. Again, don't need to put any states on there. So the reducing agent is the thing that is oxidized and the oxidizing agent is the thing that is reduced. 
let's take a look at our second example. So first we're just assigning oxidation numbers, just trying to decide if this is a redox reaction or not. We have um, oxygen that is in its elemental state, which is an oxidation number of zero. We have iron also in its elemental state, oxidation number of zero. Over on the right hand side, we have oxygen that is a minus two. We have a total of three of them for an overall minus six. This is a neutral molecule, which means all of our irons all together need to add up to a plus six. So that means our irons, each one of them must be a plus three. Uh, now um, we're going to look for oxidation numbers. Um, we're going to follow elements. So we have oxygen and oxygen starting at an oxidation number of zero, ending with an oxidation number of minus two. That is a change. So again, yes, we are looking at a redox reaction. Let's find the other thing. Well, it's kind of silly to say that in this problem because there are only two different elements. And um, we have our iron that is going from a zero to a plus three. So let's kind of map that out our oxygen right there. The oxidation number is going from zero down to a minus three. So this is a reduction. And that means that it is causing the oxidation. So it is the oxidizing agent that is O2 down here. And our other substance that we have, the iron going to um, going from oxidation number of zero up to plus three, that is an increase in oxidation number. So that is being oxidized, causing the reduction. It is the reducing agent, Fe. We've got one more example that we can do. Look at this. Oh my gosh, there's so many elements in this one. We've got so many oxidation numbers to assign. And none of them look particularly easy, so I'm just going to go from left to right. Sodium as an ion, that's a plus one. Oxygen right here is a minus two. We've got two sodium atoms for a total of plus two. We have three oxygen atoms for a total of minus six. So that means that this carbon needs to be a plus four. And then over here we have hydrogens. Those are always a plus one. We've got three of them for a total of plus three. We've got oxygens. They're always a minus two. We've got four in this case, so that's a total of minus eight, and that makes this phosphorus a plus five. We've got some more sodiums. Those are always gonna be plus one. I have two of them for a total of plus two. Hydrogen is plus one. Oxygen, minus two, four total of them, which is a minus eight. That makes this phosphorus, let me kind of do this math, plus one, Plus, plus two, plus one, minus eight. This phosphorus needs to be a plus five. Oxygens, again, minus two, and we have two of them for a total of minus four. So that makes this carbon a plus four, and this hydrogen is a plus one, and this oxygen is a minus two. So let's see if we can find any changes. We'll start with our sodium. This sodium is a plus one and the sodium over here is a plus one. So this is not being oxidized or reduced, no change. We've got a carbon as a plus four and we have a carbon over here as a plus four. So I'll cross that one out because it also did not change. Oxygens all the way through, these are always minus twos. So no change there. Hydrogens all the way through are always a plus one and our phosphorus plus five and plus five. So this is actually not a redox reaction. None of the oxidation numbers have changed. That was a whole lot of work to just say no.